Well, in the recent years, we have these concepts of uh, either escalation therapy or induction therapy. Uh, I don't think that we should focus on just one concept. It should be, which we might be discussing later on, more patient-centric. But regarding induction, what do you mean by that? Uh, we mean about more potent drugs because today we have a lot of drugs uh, in the field of MS and each drug, each new drug is maybe more effective than uh, the previous ones. However, this brings also uh, a cost which are more severe adverse events. Uh, certainly this is not the same for all new drugs but we have to consider that they might have severe side effects or adverse effects. Uh, then the question would be, do we have to treat everyone with these drugs? And my belief is not. I mean, certainly there are some people with MS who should be put on induction therapy at the time of their diagnosis. And we do have some not really biomarkers, not true biomarkers, but it is suggestive clinical fi uh, findings, MRI, and some lab findings. So uh, with the combination of this on the patient, uh, on the individual patient features, let's say, we may decide who we should put on induction therapy, who we should start with the safe first-line therapies, the injectables, the good old therapies, or some who we may not even uh, start any treatment as they might have a quite benign uh, course. And there's also another um, approach. We may start with first line therapies, and then if we see that the patients are somehow continue to have active disease, then we may switch directly to induction uh, therapies. So uh, the limitations of induction therapies would be, um, I am not mentioning about the cost, but more about the adverse effects. But that is what MS treatment is. It's a risk management. So we have to consider the risk that the disease will bring to the individual in disability and other related issues versus the adverse effects. So sometimes you have to uh, look well in the balance between the two and th sometimes may go on with more risky treatments uh, early than losing time with less effective therapies, let's say. Treatment decisions are based on the individual's uh, demographic, clinical, laboratory and imaging uh, features. And in one sense, the, mostly the imaging and some of the lab findings are somehow biomarkers. Although that they are not definite, they give us an idea. So if you have someone who at the first, uh, at the onset of the disease, had a severe attack with the corresponding to multifocal involvement of the central nervous system, uh, an attack that not responded very well to the high dose steroids or not very quickly, and an MRI which shows a lot of lesions, very active lesions involving the so-called cerebellum, the brain stem and the spinal cord, well, we don't feel very comfortable in these people. So those are people who would prefer more potent, what we call the induction therapies. But someone who comes with a mild optic neuritis and who have a few lesions, uh, we can even discuss whether we should put them on long-term treatment or not before following them for a while or start treatment but if we start treatment we certainly would go with first line treatment so not people with MS are equal so we should in fact not think that about MS but of the individual with the disease so it's MS is 
in one way or other different for everyone. And that's why maybe more a patient-centric approach in treatment decisions is more important. And that is based mostly on experience and plus some evidence that we have.